Everybody go ahead and get seated. We can kind of get started on time. I know UK's not playing, but you still want to be on time. Well, thank you all for coming. Um, and we appreciate everyone here who has an interest in serving their community. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Judge Executive Reed Hare. He will be doing the moderating. He'll explain to you the format. And I'm going to my room. So you all have a good time. <laughs> He's being punished. Going to his room. Good evening and welcome to the uh, forum, the mayor's forum tonight for city commission. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for the public, those at home, those on the computers, to see the candidates for the city commission and to uh, learn of them, to understand them, to hear what they have to say. We thank you for being here. Thank you for your interest in serving the citizens of the city of Owensboro. You know, you, you have a significant responsibility. The budget is over $120 million, and those are taxpayer dollars. And it's the city commission and the mayor's responsibility to adequately funnel out those dollars so that the citizens are protected there are benefits and services offered to those citizens. And you have stepped forward and demonstrated an interest in doing that. And you're to be commended. Now this forum tonight is a little bit different than the other forums you normally attend and have to participate in. We will have questions drawn from this box, questions submitted by city and county leaders over the last several years to determine uh, the ability of the city commission candidates to answer those questions appropriately and uh, intelligently. And I don't have no doubt that that'll be the case. We'll go in the order of the candidates appear on the ballot, one to 12. I will randomly draw out a question from the basket and read it to the group. Candidate one will answer the question uh, in uh, 90 seconds to respond. We will continue down the line until all candidates have answered a question. You will not have the same question. Each candidate will get a new question. I may ask a follow-up question for clarification. We will have two rounds of questioning just from the standpoint of time frame. Each individual will have the opportunity to answer two of the questions. There's over 30 questions in the basket. At the end of that, the candidates will be afforded a 90 second closing statement. Any questions on the format? All right, we'll begin. Now rather than have an opening statement, what we'll do, what I'll do, is when I introduce each candidate, I will give a short bow which you submitted to the uh, Secretary Administrative Assistant here at City Hall. And then I will ask you the question. If you're ready to begin, we will. Call Mr. Larry Maglinger, number one. Larry graduated from Davis County High School and received electronics training in the Owensboro Davis County Vocational School and Sam's Technical School of Electronics. Mr. Maglinger and his wife, Tammy, have five children and eight grandchildren. He has been the owner of Custom Audio Video for over 42 years and has served on numerous city boards throughout the years. Mr. Maglinger, if you would take the podium and I will get the first question for you. Larry. As our local public pools get older, they require ongoing repairs and most need to be replaced at the cost of several hundred thousand dollars. What ideas do you have to solve this issue? Well, I think that it all starts with the budget. Uh, we've got to decide you know, what we can afford and what we can't. 
Uh, I think that uh, we've got to keep our infrastructure, uh, we've got to keep it continued going to where everybody can enjoy the different uh, uh, amenities that we have. So I think that we've got to plan for it and come up with the funds to uh, make it happen. So in your opinion, the pools need to stay open and not closed? I think they should stay open unless they're just non-repairable and are going to cost too much to keep going. Okay, thank, thank you, you, Larry. Second on the ballot is Mark McCoy, and Mark McCoy was, uh, is absent this evening. And I'm assuming I have number three is Joseph Martin. Is that you, sir? Yes. Okay, I have absent on here, so I don't have a bio. You may want to take a few seconds to, uh, to tell people who you are and uh, as uh, a very couple of short sentences, and then I'll ask you your question. Joseph Martin. Well, I was born and raised in Davis County. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I got two kids, one boy, one girl. I, I live in several places. I always wind up coming back here because this is my home and I wanna try to improve this city. Okay, Mr. Martin. We continue to lose high quality trained police, fire, and public works employees to higher paying public and private sector employers. What is your plan to address this issue? Well, any problem you have, you gotta find out the solution. Why is it happening? And then you gotta find out what to do about it. Me personally, I would go in there and find out why is this happening? And then come up with a solution as far as keeping good police officers in, in, the, off, in the police station. But you gotta understand, most people work at jobs, they like it, but the way they've been treated or they're not respected enough to stay. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Martin. Fourth on the ballot is Jeff Sanford. Jeff graduated from Western Kentucky University with a degree in business management. Mr. Sanford and his wife, Dr. Misty Bray Sanford, have two children. He currently works for Hart's Real Estate as a realtor and has formerly served two terms as city commissioner and one term as mayor pro tem. Jeff, you take the podium, please. Jeff, should the city, should the city be actively pursuing annexing more property? And if so, how? That's a pretty tough question. I think that's been looked at in the past. Um, we are annexing. When I was here, we did annex a lot of pro uh, properties, but uh, that kind of slowed towards the end of my term. I think in my second term, um, you know, the annexing part is, do you want the services and are you willing to pay for the services, such as fire, uh, police protection, those type things? You know, that's a, that's a community debate that we can have, but I, it, I don't, I'm not sure that it's time to have it again, but let's just take, for example, a, a neighborhood like Lake Forest. If they should so deem that they would want to be annexed in the city, we'd love to have them because we need the, ta the tax dollars uh, on the, from the uh, property taxes. Uh, at the same time, not everybody wants to pay the taxes. So that's, that's, a, that's a very tough question and, and it's up for debate. Um, but I think there's other things we can do to create our, uh, a, a better tax, uh, property tax system. That's streamlining the way that we, uh, uh, the way that we do these, these uh, belighted properties. I think there's, there's, there's ways to put those things back on the payroll, on the, uh, on the uh, tax roll, I'm sorry, and, and create more tax revenue for the city. Uh, there's a lot of blighted properties throughout the community that uh, there's a lot of programs other cities are using where you can take these these properties, streamline it to where the investors come in, and it'll put a lot more tax dollars in the city's pocket. So that's that's my answer. 
Okay. Thank Good. you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Rick Searcy is number five on the ballot. Rick graduated from Fort Campbell High School and Kentucky Wesleyan College with a Bachelor of Science degree in Communication Arts. Mr. Searcy is the current Vice President of Community Living at the Wendell Foster Center. He has served on numerous boards and committees throughout the years. Rick, if you'd take the podium. Rick, we hear every election that planning and zoning is a problem, yet the ordinances they enforce are created by the city commission. Do you believe the ordinances need your review? Why or why not? And what specifically would you like to see reviewed relative to planning and zoning? <laughs> That's <a> good question. <laughs> Uh, to answer that is the answer is yes, a absolutely. Uh, planning and zoning is is uh, I think it is a good it is a good service of the city, but the city commission needs to uh, have have a little bit input on that. Uh, what I would like to see is we need a little bit of relief from the businesses business community. Uh, so a lot of times with planning and zoning, it could be a little bit of some red tape when it comes to getting properties rezoned. I would like that to be a, a lot faster process, a lot quicker process. That way in, in the middle of our city development, our downtown development, as well as other properties throughout the city, that we can be a, a lot more flexible when it comes to developing the city and moving it forward. So that's kind of my answer on that. Uh, I think that's, that is, you're right, Judge, that is something that has been spoken of a lot and you hear it from you hear to hear it from both sides but i think it's a discussion that the city should continue to have every single time with planning and zoning as well as any other any other the boards or commissions that the city operates at the time okay good thank you rick adam marshall adam graduated from eastern kentucky university with a bachelor of science and homeland security degree as well as an associate in arts degree from Owensburg Community and Technical College. Mr. Marshall and his wife Mariana have been married for 12 years and have three children. He currently manages River City Pawn Shop and has served on multiple committees throughout the years. Adam, if you'd take the podium, please. All right, Adam. Under what circumstances or challenges would you be willing to raise taxes or incur additional city debt? That's one of the most common questions I think most of our citizens are going to have. First of all, I know I can get another one if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect question. Okay. Um, first of all, our citizens need to be need to feel they have a voice. Uh, at, at no point in time should should they feel like when you raise taxes, it shouldn't be for their benefit. Um, unfortunately, lately, we've had to do that by the occurrence of all the debt that we've had in the, in the past. So what I would like to, for us to, to consider every time that we, we have that conversation is how that's gonna affect our citizens' pocketbooks. First of all, the rising cost, cost of living in the city is astronomical considering decades before us. So we need to also consider not just what debt we're going to incur, but how it's going to affect our citizens. Our citizens always have to pay that debt for us. It's, it's not my pocketbook. It's not our commissioner's pocketbooks that we're opening up. It's their pocketbooks. So at the end of the day, we need to consider how it affects them and the other things that go along with that, such as lately, they've had a rising cost from RWRA. They've had a rising cost from OMU. Those, all of those combined, is is not it's not a great thing when you have to consider then raising taxes so at the end of the day there's the citizens need to feel like they have a voice okay good follow up on that are there circumstances where you would be willing to raise taxes or incur additional city debt if the if the risk gives us a great greater reward so basically if we're going to bring a lot for the for the community such as the park that we did years ago that was very debatable okay a lot of com a lot of the citizens were against it but the majority of them were for it because it gave us a, 
a good face for the community. Any, anytime there's that risk, we have to give them that value. So if the value is there, I'd be willing to consider it. That doesn't mean that I'm for it, but I will consider that. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Adam Marshall. Charlie Shelton is number seven on the ballot. Charlie graduated from the University of Louisville with a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, as well as a Bachelor of Science in Accounting and Professional Services from the University of Southern Indiana. Mr. Shelton and his wife Becky have been married for 10 years and have one son. He is a certified public accountant and has experience in the electrical utility industry, financial planning, and risk analysis. Charlie, if you take the phone. That many times, these are the first time I've seen these questions too. I'm glad I'm not running for office. <laughs> <laughs> that make me feel good. Yeah. <laughs> In terms of economic development, what is next? for Owensboro, and what role should city government play in making it happen? It's a great question. Um, economic development, as we all know, is uh, very important to all citizens and to the community. Um, it's kind of the oak conundrum, which comes first, the chicken or the egg, is the way I relate this question, because if you build it, will they come, or do you have to have them first, as in terms of employees, for the employers to come? Personally, I believe the city should be out advocating for its citizens and recruiting large employers, such as I know South Carolina landed a Boeing plant in the last couple of years. We should be going after someone like that that's going to facilitate higher pay, uh, good long-term jobs, uh, career gro growth, uh, employment, and, and it's going to incentivize all employers to either raise their wages or move on in the city. And we have to be, and you know, I, I, I get it from a lot of citizens when I you know, present this, and they say, uh, well, we don't have enough college graduates. Baloney, we have plenty of college graduates. They just live in Nashville or Louisville or Bowling Green, or they've all moved on somewhere else, and not all of them, because I'm back here. But a lot of kids that I graduated from Owensboro Catholic High School with, they went on to college, got their degree, and they live in a larger town. And why do they feel like they need to do that? Because they can make a six-figure income. Well, if we have the jobs here in Owensboro, I know they love Owensboro just as much as I do, and they would love to be here. Um, that's about yeah. all I got all for right. that one. So Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Any follow-up, Judge? No, I think not. All right, thank uh, you. Not right now. Thank you. I heard that little bell, and uh, Adrian's, she, she, the bell goes off when you've got 10 seconds left to go on your, on your time. So, uh, Charlie, you used almost all of your tap. Good job. <laughs> now, on eighth in the ballot is Larry Condor. Larry graduated from Brescia University with a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration degree. Mr. Condor and his wife, Rosemary, have six children and 18 grandchildren. He's the Executive Director of Operations for PEAK, P-E-A-K, Public Energy Authority of Kentucky, where he is an advisor and broker for natural gas supplies to small communities across Kentucky. He is also president of Riverwalk Properties, LLC. Mr. Condor is a current city commissioner elected in 2016 and serves on multiple boards. Larry, if you would take the podium. Let me get a, let's see if I can get an easy question for you. An easy question? Oh, no, it's maybe not so easy. Thanks, Judge. Thanks, Judge. I like that. Do you believe that some communities, like Elizabethtown, that have the ability to levy, excuse me, that have the ability to levy local restaurant or hospitality taxes, while Owensboro does not, is that fair, and what can be done to resolve it? Home rule. That's basically where that comes from. Is home rule. Home rule is, an advocate, is one of the top priorities of our Chamber of Commerce in our next state legislative session. You want to define home rule? I can do that without a problem. Home rule basically moves the decision-making process from Frankfurt 
to the local government in, in, governmental entities, whether that be the county or city governments is what it does. And that can take a lot of forms. That form can be whether it be in lift or lost, as somebody might have the acronyms for that, where the voter actually votes on projects that you would have throughout the community. Or in the circumstance that the judge is talking about, E-Town or Beaver Dam, for example, a very small community that implemented a restaurant tax to be able to funnel the funds through their CVB to where 75% of CVB, that, what the Convention and Visitors Bureau okay. of each entity, and so 75% of that is dedicated toward tourism. Now, to find tourism, that can be a lot, a lot of different ways. But what happened in a case that I looked at with Beaver Dam, their revenue stream increased to where they had almost $800,000, $900,000 per year that came from that revenue stream. What happened was they had to lower their property tax twice within five years as a result of that tax on restaurants, okay? So should we do that here? The answer is yes, but only if you can lower the income taxes of individuals. And I believe the occupational net profit tax can be lowered by 20 basis points if you implemented any type of rules that home rule would be advocated for. And I'd love to go to Frankfurt to speak to every state representative to make sure they understand how this impacts everybody in our community. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Judge. Ninth on the ballot is Pam L. Smithwright. Pam graduated from Owensboro High School, Rosebud's Beauty Academy of St. Louis, Missouri, the Owensboro Vocational School, now OCTC, and South Seas Cooking School, Captiva Island, Florida. Ms. Smithwright and her husband, Eugene, have two children and two grandchildren. She's a local business owner and is a current city commissioner serving since 2011. Mrs. Smithwright was Owensboro's first female mayor pro tem, and she has served on numerous boards throughout the years. Pam, would you take the podium, please? The city of Owensboro allocates large sums of tax dollars to local arts organizations and museums. How do you feel about tax money supporting these organizations and what ideas do you have to lessen the financial burden on the city of Owensboro? Who, who did these questions? These <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it, I, I think it's, it's uh, it could be a matter of opinion. And, um, you know, I think that every community needs to have um, arts and, and things that will bring people in. It's, it's the quality of life for folks. Uh, you know, some people like the symphony, some people like art museums, some people like the science museum. And I think that it is part of the city's responsibility to provide these things because that brings people into our community. You know, if, we, if, if we're searching for doctors and, and, and attorneys and all these different kind of people to come and live in our community, we have to have something here for them. Because when you're an educated person, most people like some type of art, music, or something like that. So I think that it's important that we strive to have the amenities that will also draw uh, people here. We, we are liking in doctors and we are liking in uh, a lot of, there are no minority uh, doctors in this community as far as African Americans are concerned. And, and one of the reasons is because of the you got, you got 10 seconds. It's because we don't have some of the cultural things that everybody likes. So and it's hard to, to uh, separate it out, who gets this, who gets that. But I do think that we have a responsibility to have those kind of things for our citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Tenth on the ballot is Jay Bellotta. Jay graduated from Davis County High School, attended the Owensboro Community and Technical College and Todd Thornton Real Estate Academy. Mr. Vallada and his wife Lynn have three children. He's a real estate broker at Gulfstream Commercial Services, 
LLC and is currently the president of the Greater Owensboro Realtor Association. Mr. Velada is a current city commissioner elect elected in 2016 and serves on numerous boards. Jay, if you'd take the podium, please. Let's see. Jay, describe the process you will use to develop a position for yourself on a very controversial issue that comes before the commission. Can I have the last question, please? <laughs> <laughs> um, good question. Um, I tell you, the, the, the thing you always have to look at in any decision-making process in this commission is to look at not just the fact that it's not about the city, as the city it's about the city as a citizen and the citizens are the ones that make the decisions based on what they provide us as information so the first thing that I would do would be to collectively talk to those 50 plus thousand people out there to see you know what their opinion would be on that based on the fact that they're the ones that need to have the voice you need to be the voice for those people so um, how would I carve out a position um, that they would be based on what the, the citizens uh, opinion of that decision would be it would have to be based on the on the community's uh, input and I think s collectively we're stronger if we uh, recognize that so what would you do and, and I ask this because there were occasions when I was faced this as a elected official for the fiscal court what if the situation arises where in your heart of hearts you believe a certain course of action needs to be taken and yet in the public in the court of public opinion it is not the most popular or the most advantageous to take we've never had that situation here i don't know what you're talking <laughs> about um actually um it, I, it comes down to the um the the position of knowing that uh i'm a i'm a tax paying citizen too mm -hmm. i work for a living in this community and I, I pay my taxes just like everyone else does when i'm greeted in the public by someone who's on a fixed income who tells me thank you for doing or not doing something based on the fact that they don't have a way to make another dollar I got to look at that and realize that there are people out there that have needs that we need to make, make sure are met as, ser as stewards of this community and and you just have to vote with your conscience and, and understanding that sometimes it's not all about the grander picture it's about what has to be done to make sure that all citizens are considered okay Jay thank you thank you didn't mean to put you on the spot <laughs> Eleventh on the ballot is Megan Hagen. I hope I pronounced that right, Megan. Megan graduated from Apollo High School and studied socio sociology at Kentucky Wesleyan College. Mrs. Hagen and her husband Trenton have one son, whom they are in the process of adopting. She is a freelance writer and the secretary for Young Democrats of American Jewish Caucus. Megan, if you'd take the podium. Megan, as a city commissioner, what ideas would you offer to ensure we maintain strong, effective public safety departments? Well, first of all, um, I feel like it's important that um, we go back to the question that was asked earlier about uh, the police um, and keeping people coming back to the police. Um, we, we, we often are losing um, employees and um, on to the department and it's because in my opinion we they aren't getting the best benefits so one of the things that I would like to advocate for is that our public servants be given more money and be there that they actually that we not mess with their pensions I mean that's a huge thing uh, that's going on right now on a state level on lo a local level you know there are things that we can do to advocate for them and and a lot of that is we can advocate and and we can go i feel as though we can go to frankfurt and and speak on their behalf i mean i do that often for many things but uh, civil servants they especially police officers they don't get a lot of money 
uh, they aren't treated with the best, most respect, and then a lot of the times they're putting their lives on the line for people that, you know, for, for their community, and sorry, I'm not the best public speaker, <laughs> but I would really like to um, see that they get better benefits and better, um, better treatment across the board. Maybe that we have a, a, um, a, a, li a liaison between them and the community. I mean. Okay. Megan, you did great. Thanks. Yeah. Finally, number 12 on the ballot, Andy Gamblin. Andy graduated from Union County High School and works as a bus monitor for the Owensboro Public Schools. Andy, if you take the podium, please. Describe what you believe are the most critical city services, city services, and explain why. Um, I believe the police department is uh, very, very important, a fire department. Um, we need to be taking care of them. Of course, I know a lot of them, just like they, you know, they are leaving, and that has a lot to do with Frankfurt and with our governor right now, changing this, trying to change the pension to a 401k. That that is not right. I'm, I'm a bus monitor. I know. I mean, and. Um, we as candidates, or even when we become a city commissioner, we need to be, and even the mayor, and of course when you was county judge, we need to go to Frankfurt. We need to uh, tell our legislators, hey, look, you know, fix this pension plan for our uh, employees. We need to be, we are the voice for the people. Good, thank you, Andy. All right, moving along. Now that everybody's done their first one, yeah, you're relaxed and you're ready to go for the second question. Andy, I'll let you catch your breath. We'll start with uh, Larry once again. We'll get to the hard questions. Now. All right. <laughs> Larry, if the Kentucky legislature does not modify the public employees' pension plans, and the city of Owensboro is required to increase annual funding beyond the current level. How will you address this problem? Increase taxes or cut expenses and be specific with regard to where you would cut expenses? Good question. First of all, we have, we have to fund our portion of the city pension. Now to do that, uh, we don't want to raise taxes. Nobody wants taxes raised. So we have to go back to the budget and look at what our priority is to cut some expenses. Uh, we might have to uh, cut down some of the amenities that we have in the city, which we need. But as far as I'm concerned, we have to fund our portion of the pension for the city. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Joseph Martin. Joseph, as Owensboro continues to grow out Highway 54 and downtown, how would you address the concerns of citizens who worry about South Frederica Street and other areas of our city? Well, I always said downtown is great. What about the rest of the city? We need to do more rest of the city and 54 booming. We need to come up with some plans to help the situation. But as for me, we need to be more efficient. We waste money. That's where the money going. That's why we're in debt. We don't, we got to use certain amount for certain things and quit wasting money taxpayers money quit raising taxes we got the money we need to use it right thank you uh, joseph you you bring up uh, force me to a follow-up question 
uh, be specific, where does the city waste money? Well, we give money away. It's nice to give money away, but if you don't have it, you can't give money away. You need to use it for a better source. So if you don't, you're going to be in a bind, like getting bonds, paying interest on the bonds. If we get too many bonds, we just pay on the interest, not on the principal. We have all these bonds we got paid for. Okay. Thank you, Joseph. Jeff, you're next, but before, come ahead and get up there. I, I want to recognize a, a fellow in the audience here. Bef before you folks put him to sleep, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, Bob Whitmer, former city manager, is here, and I always, and now he's director at the airport. And Bob, it's always good to see you, and thank you for your continued interest in the city of Owensboro and the success of this city. So, good to see you. Uh, Jeff? Yes, sir. Next question. All right. This is this is a little what was alluded to earlier. Mm -hmm. Is the system of taxation fair for the citizens of Owensboro? If not, what changes would you recommend? Oh boy, that's a tough one. Um, is the system fair? Well, it's the only system that we have that I've known since I've been here. Uh, the system that we have, um, as far as fairness, um, boy, um, I think I think it's fair to to a degree. I mean, the um, the more you make, of course, you're going to be in a higher tax bracket, but. Uh, the city of Owensboro, you know, when we start looking at our taxes, I know they've had to raise taxes lately, but if you look at us compared to a lot of other cities, our tax rate is kind of in the middle with cities of our size. So nobody likes to spend more money. Nobody likes to pay more taxes out of their pocket. Um, so as far as fairness, if you look and compare us to other cities in Kentucky, I know from being up here, that we are in the middle to the lower middle. We're not at the top. And we have a lot to offer in this city for what we pay for. You look downtown here and you look at the things that are going on in 54 and the investment investment that was made. Now, I can't sit here and say that I voted for all that because I didn't. I voted against a ton of it because I sat right there and did it. Sometimes by myself and sometimes with Pam here, right here because we use logic. And, and I voted for what I thought was right at the time. But as far as as taxes I, I i think it's pr it's pretty fair but we don't want to pay more but you have to pay something to have a decent city or you can end up like a like a city in calhoun who's never grown in uh, you know in in years so we don't want that either thank you thank you jeff all right i think uh, i'd stay away from mclean county if i were you if I, yeah right. Right. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Rick Searcy, Rick. Yep. Like other than the obvious, what differentiates you from every other candidate for city commission? <laughs> <laughs> so can this count as my clothes? <laughs> <laughs> um, You're the only one with a purple shirt on. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. That answered it right all the time too. Uh, you know what? <laughs> we we have just to answer this fairly we have a we have a great slate of people here um and I, i've said it before and i'll say it again i'm honored to be a part of this group uh, i think i know a lot of these people i've known them before we run most of them and i, I have a, and we've served a lot together uh what's different so with that being said um i think i'm a pretty good choice as well uh what differentiates me from is my background and my experience uh i've started in nonprofits. I've, I've served people from all over areas, different genders, different races. It just didn't matter. Uh, also, I have budget and experience, uh, which is something that has been at a higher level throughout my executive levels as well. Uh, I'm, I'm able to go into any neighborhood and any group, and that's something I've, I've really been able to do over the years is 
being able to do those things like that. So that's what differentiates me a little bit. And I'm an Ohio State fan as well. So <laughs> nobody up here is, trust me. <laughs> yeah, you're all alone. Here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All cool. right. Thank you, Rick. Adam Marshall. <laughs> Adam, this is similar to a question that was asked earlier. Should the city be as involved as it currently is in funding the arts and museums? Well, it's pretty much exactly pretty much the same question. Ab absolutely, the community deserves that opportunity to to have those 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 services. The, they they help the quality of life, as Miss Wright, Smith Wright said. So. At, at, at no point should we question it, but I do think that we need to make sure that the, as I said earlier, the, the risk meets the reward. At every point, when, when you consider those things, um, the museums are amazing. Uh, we, we, in fact, we could probably do even more. Uh, I, I don't think that maybe we do enough to attract people of, you know, of different backgrounds to make sure that they're, um, comfortable coming here to enjoy more than just the day-to-day -day things that we enjoy. I mean, a park is great, but not everybody is a park kind of person. You know, some people don't like to be in the chaos of the children, and children are great. I have three, but, you know, it, it gets wild. Um, and a lot of times they, they would like the arts. They would like the, the, the plays, and, and we've done, I think we've got a lot of opportunity to grow there. And I think the community in general has grown, but I think it is up to the city commissioners, the, the commission, to make sure that, that that's funded adequately. I, I do believe we, our museum needs, needs more attention. And I don't think that we should take anything from them. Okay, Adam, thank you very much. Charlie Shelton. Charlie, what ideas do you have to improve Owensboro that cost little or no money? Ideas to improve Owensboro that cost little to no money. That's the question. Well, that's a, a good one. Well, first, we can lower the occupational tax rate. So if we lower the tax rate on working citizens, they can go spend more money and boost revenues and profits for our local businesses. Okay. And I think that's a very least cost solution from a not, not having to go out here and redo the green belt or anything like that that can add benefit and value to everyone's life. Charlie, assuming that the current city commission and the mayor have imposed taxes to cover necessary expenses. Yes, sir. If you go and you lower those taxes, what areas are you going to have corresponding decreases in expenses so that you have a balanced budget? Well, you have to look where you have redundant services. So we brought up the fact that we have two swimming pools. Are they both being utilized to their maximum capacity? Uh, do you drop down to one? We have two golf courses. Do we need both golf courses? Do we drop down to one? Uh, we have lots of good community you know, activities that are available that are somewhat redundant. And you know, we have wonderful park system, you know, uh, but do all the parks meet our needs? You know, do we need to look at expanding parks? And if we do, then we got to cut, you know, something somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So th those are things that you can look at um, and different items, you know, and, and I've talked to different folks and we don't have line item veto per se, and, but we've got to find a common solution that develops your needs versus your wants. So we've got to be prioritizing those needs, Good. and we have to be limiting the wants. Good, Charlie. Thank, Thank you. you. Larry Conger. Tell me a pinching question. <laughs> I gave you a softball last time. I know you did. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Larry, what do you see as our biggest challenge as a city? Our biggest challenge as a city and what is your plan to address it? Well, and we just just hit it. 
is what's going to be coming together with the pension costs. And you could see this coming over two years ago, what was, going, what was coming down the track. I mean, it was very evident. This year in the uh, budget, we had $817,000 that was additional pension costs on top of what we currently pay. Next year, 835, next year, 875. A cumulative effect of $2.5 million. Now, what could we do with that? Not only the City of Owensboro, but Davis County Fiscal Court, OMU, RWRA, all of our governmental energy ent entities will be facing this issue in the very short term. It's going to happen. The needs and versus wants issue is going to hit you square in the face. It's not going to be slowing down. So how do you address that? So I'll throw out one right now, which is what we can be able to look at. What I do is I prepay for natural gas. That's my business. You have an interest rate arbitrage that you prepay for your supplies, what you do. So with OMU, OMU will become a taker of electricity in 2021 is what they will be doing. So what you can do, and this is being done today, you actually put in place a 30-year contract with various suppliers where almost 15% of that cost of electricity that you're going to be buying under these long-term contracts as a, at a discount to what you are going to be paying versus the market. That's because we're a municipal entity. That's what that is. So if your revenue stream is about $300 million a year with OMU, 15% of that, now what do you got? 50% of that goes back to the ratepayers. The other 50% goes to the state to be able to pay that pension cost. That's the key. That's one of the biggest things we can do is leverage that asset that's coming down the road right now to pay those those pension costs that we have. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Judge. Ma'am Smith Wright. I don't like the way you did that. <laughs> <laughs> there are Pam, there are two major governments operating in Owensboro. City Hall and Davis County Fiscal Court. How are their roles similar and how are they different? What, if any, changes would you like to see in the relationships between the two? And please be specific in your answer. Uh, Mayor Tom Watson appointed me to the uh, Unification Task Force uh, several years ago when he was first in office. And it was about us trying to see whether or not that if we wanted to merge our city governments. So we decided not to use the word merge, we decided to use the word unif unify our governments. Um, you know, I think the city and the county can work together, you know, maybe, you know, uh, merging some things like maybe our parks departments can work together, maybe, um, uh, and there are probably other things that we can do, but I'm sorry, can you? Re I'd be glad to, it was it, a long That question. was a long <laughs> There are two major governments operating in Owensboro, City Hall and Davis County Fiscal Court. How are their roles similar and how are they different? What, if any, changes would you like to see in the relationship between the two? Okay, they're similar because of the fact that um, we are governing our people. The, the county government, the fiscal court is, is governing the people in the county, the city is governing the people in the city, okay? And what I, and the rest of it, what's that about? The well, of course, as you, as you know, the, the, the city, a city resident is also under the- uh, Under the, gov I mean, under under the, the city of- Fiscal court. Yes. Okay. Well, you know, one of the things that I found out when we were uh, discussing the unification uh, project was that people who lived in the county loved to come in the city and use all the city uh, amenities but they didn't want to pay the taxes that we have and so they could go back to the county they can come in and and use our roads and the parks and all that kind of stuff and then go back and not have to pay that tax uh, I would like to see us work together uh, have conversations with each other and to find out what would be the best thing that we could do to alleviate uh, financial burden on either one of us. Okay, good. Thank you, Pam. It was a long question. It was a tough question. Jay. I don't want that one. Okay, you're, you get another one. This is an easy one. 
The city of Owensboro subsidizes every round of golf played at Ben Halls and Hillcrest by about $11 per round, while privately owned golf courses are flirting with bankruptcy. Would you commit to reduce the subsidy to no more than $3 per round if you are elected commissioner? That, that's obscure. Okay. Um, that, that math doesn't work. Uh, obviously, there's a reason that the uh, rounds are subsidized at the level that they are. Obviously, we're taking care of maintenance issues at the golf courses and, and in the park itself. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the, probably how they figured it, the right. total cost versus the number of rounds. Okay, so uh, it, it would be hard to go back and take away. Obviously, that would, that would cause a reduction in something, so you would have no choice but to uh, probably not maintain those facilities to adequate levels. Or increase the fees. Increase the fees would be another option, and uh, would you be competing and flirting with the same disaster that you would have when in the private sector where they're going into bankruptcy? I mean, you would have no choice but to increase the fees for rounds of play. I mean, obviously, if the, you're taking the subsidy away, you have to balance that somehow. The math has to add up. Okay, I mean, so let me ask you the question again. Okay. Would you commit to reduce the subsidy to no more than $3 per round if elected commissioner? Well, I don't know that it would be three, but we would have to reduce the subsidy to some level, yes. I would think that would be there would be okay. some compromise there. Good. Thank you, Jay. Was that okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's all right. Hey, hey, I'm just, just a moderator. Just making sure my math. I'll I'll do like uh, Pam just mentioned, I'll finish up and I'll go to the county. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Megan, please. Megan, what should the city's involvement be in economic development? Um, I'd say that, Charlie Shelton, you actually made a fine point. Um, right now, keeping more millennials in Owensboro, bringing more, more people my age that, um, especially people that have college degrees, we need to figure out a way to keep more, get more factories here, uh, especially union union jobs. I'm I'm a proud union supporter, and I feel it as though right now, if we could keep, uh, find a way to keep people here, so they don't go to Louisville, they don't go to Lexington, you know, that's a, a huge part of our economic development here in Owensboro. And also, can I just say, let's put a stop to the development downtown for right now. Let's take care of our city. I feel as though um, our biggest problem is the, the, the debt we're incurring from uh, downtown. Uh, okay. I, I, if, how do you stop a bear from getting into a pot of honey? You take the honey away from the bear. So. Good. Thank you, Megan. Andy Gamlin. Explain your stance on our city acquiring the right to establish an entertainment district in downtown Owensboro. Mm -hmm. Wow. Do the, read that one more time. Okay. Explain your stance on the city of Owensboro acquiring the right to establish an entertainment district in downtown Owensboro. Well, uh, our city, of course, we've just... Uh, We've got one now, of course, the Bluegrass Museum. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's, it's a great, great place and great thing that we did. But it's still, it's put us more, to me, I feel like it's put us more in debt. And, um, and I mean, I, I like entertainment. Um, entertainment's good, but you gotta, um, you have to watch what you do, I mean, if, to me, we need to be working on trying to bring, bring in high paying jobs, you know. So, like Mr. Shelton said, so we can have our people to come back. And we need to look at ways where we can cut taxes. Because without cutting taxes and everything, and, um, you know, entertainment's good, but, you know, um, sometimes you may, you gotta make the tough decisions. And, um, 
Of course, we got to be looking at ways we can bring in these high-paying jobs. Okay, good. Thank you, Andy. Okay. Uh, that concludes the, the questions. Now we have left at the uh, closing statements for each of you. Uh, and, and while I joked up here and, and tried to make light of some things, these were tough questions. Uh, they, they really were. I, were. Were I in your seat, I would shudder with, when somebody would have asked me some of these things. I, my imagination isn't quick enough to make up an answer on that. You've got to have a little meat on the bone. And uh, I was thoroughly impressed with the, uh, with the, the level of, of, uh, and the demonstration of your interest and your involvement in the city of Owensburg to be able to look at these issues and address them. So I, I learned a good bit tonight, and I thank you very much for your contribution and your knowledge. And uh, to those who will be successful, I offer you an early congratulations. To those who are not come November the 6th, then uh, I encourage you to continue your involvement with city government because you add so much to the uh, to the fiber and to the makeup of this community. So with that, I'll ask uh, Larry if uh, you will come up and give a 90 second closing statement. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. I wanna thank the city and Judge Hare for allowing me to share uh, my views with you tonight. I'm Larry Maglinger. I'll provide new leadership. I will have the vision and experience to move this city forward. I'll always make decisions based on what is best for Owensboro. I would be honored to be your next city commissioner. I'm number one on the ballot and I'm asking for your vote November the 6th. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Joseph Martin. Well, I just want to thank you for having me here today. I'm privileged to try to do something to make a difference. It's time for a change to understand the problems we face every day and what need to be done. I'm honest, dependable, hardworking. As a city commissioner, I will listen to your ideals and concerns. Two things I will ask. Can we ask myself, can we afford it or do we need it? You have a right to know what goes on in your city. I, I support working families, fire and police department, and senior citizens and veterans. I ask for your vote on November 6th. I'm num number three on the ballot. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Jeff Sanford. I want to thank you, Judge, for having us and uh, doing this tonight, and the mayor and the city for putting this on. Uh, this is great because I get I'm getting to know all the candidates, and it's fun. And uh, I remember my days up here not too long ago. Um, I have a vision of for Owensboro. You know, we've done a lot. These guys here have done a lot. The group I was with did a lot. The group before me had did, has done a lot. This city has grown, and we have something to be proud of. I mean, people come from outside of Owensboro, and I don't think people from Owensboro really understand what we have. You know, we can complain about a lot of things, but I think with positive leadership, that's what comes into play. You have to have a vision, and you have to know where you want to go. We're not done yet, people. We have got a lot of work to do and a lot of things to do to make this a better community, and we can do it. Uh, basically what you have up here is a team not everybody's a great at math not everybody's a great speaker not everybody's the rah-rah person but it's a, a group of five people when you put them together everybody has something to offer that's what you're looking for in a city commissioner and as far as economic development things like that you have to understand what makes it work I think it's education I think it's skilled trade 
I think it's infrastructure. I think it's tax structure. Those type of things. And it's a go-getter. It's the EDC and someone who's going to go out and knock on doors and get people to come in here. But we have got to invest in education. Skilled trade is where it's at. You look across the country, we need to become the skilled trade capital of the world and the jobs will come, I'm telling you, because we have a ton to offer in this city. And I'm very proud of this city and I think it's one of the best places on earth. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Rick Searcy. All right. Thank you, Judge. Uh, city staff, I didn't, I guess the mayor really did sneak to his office, didn't he? Thank you, our current judge as well, for being here. Um, you know, we, you guys all have a tough decision. And, you know, honestly, you've heard me say this before. I think, I think you guys are worthy of it because the city deserves it. Whenever there's elections coming on, there should be tough decisions on which candidates you have. Um, now, I'm, I'm actually running as well because I think I will be part, part of a good decision. You know, um, over the past few months, you guys have allowed me into your homes and I've been walking around. You guys have offered me drinks and water, and when it's been hot outside, you guys have offered me cocoa and gloves when it's been cold outside. And that, to me, that shows the true kindness of the people in this city. That's why I honestly feel that our better days are ahead. But it's not going to be quick. It's not going to be easy. It's going to take all of us coming together, Republicans, Democrats, independents, all of us. And that is, that is what I want, I want to bring to City Hall. This is the way that we get through these issues because like Commissioner Condor said, there are more things coming down the line. And we need a government, just as Jeff said, as a team up here. You know, so when, when, when we go through these things, we can face these head on. Also, I want, we, you guys deserve a government that understands whether you are a local business owner, whether you are a working family, whether you are a single parent trying to go and work. You need a, a government that understands you. You need a government that knows what's going, what you're going through. All right, that is what I will bring to City Hall, and that's what I'm asking you guys to work with me. That way we can roll up our sleeves and work together and move the city forward. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Adam Marshall. Judge, thank yeah. you for having us here tonight. Uh, to all the candidates, first of all, I wish you all good luck. Um, you know, I, I decided to run for political office as a kid in high school. I had a passion, I had a dream, um, and I felt now was the time to do it. We're in a pivotal point for our community. We can either continue to move forward and take on additional debt or we can just face it head on and increase our, our revenue. I think the key to, our, to what we're gonna be doing moving forward, as, as Commissioner Condor said, there's a $2.5 million that's coming down the line. We have to head that off. We have to figure out ways, creative ways, not the standard ways that we're used to. We can't hit a tax, can't think tax first. <laughs> Citizens certainly don't want us to think tax first. So as a, as a commissioner, I want to make sure that you all have a voice. I'm from a younger generation. I have a different, different look on things. But I want to make sure that my voice is for my kids, for all, many of your grandkids, kids. If I don't have that view, then where's Owensboro in 20, 40, 50 years down the road? It's not just about me. It's about all of you. That's what I stand here for. I want to make sure that on November the 6th, you know I'm for all of you, not me. Vote six on the 6th. Thank you, Adam. Charlie Shelton. Uh, Judge, thank you for moderating this evening. Uh, thanks to the mayor and his staff for putting this on. And thanks to all the candidates. Uh, this is a lot of work, as you all are well aware. And it is a, a challenge at times, and you, you battle through. But I, what I'd like to say to the citizens of Owensboro is I bring to the table knowledge, education, and a very work experience. I've worked in everything from uh, farming, construction, retail banking, utility operations to utility, uh, you know, on the backside, the business side management. Um, so financial planning, budgeting, 
um, long-term forecasting, all these different tools that you need to be successful for planning for the future. And that's what we need to be doing is planning for the future and not knee-jerk reactions. And, and I, I get certain things pop up and you have to raise taxes. And there are times that you know, your votes are called into question and it's tough. And I commend you all for that, doing that. Um, but we have to have a plan moving forward. And I want that plan to be open and communicated to the citizens. And I want them to have input into that plan. And so I'd like to propose a strategic plan for the commission should I be elected. And, uh, and that plan will be available to the citizens to give us that input and feedback and guide our direction, guide their vision for the city, not my vision, their vision for the city. I have a six-year-old son, and I want him to have the choice to live in Owensboro when he comes of age to make that choice, not because it's where he grew up, but because it's where he wants to be because it is a great place to live. My name is Charlie Shelton, and I would greatly appreciate your vote on November 6th. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Larry Condor. Thank you, Judge. If you remember about nine years ago, there was a little time when uh, Judge Reed here and I had a little conversation out on the, on the uh, front lawn. I asked him this question. What do you think about me becoming a politician? I won't give you the bad part, he said. But he looked at me and said, you know, the governance part, Larry, I think you can handle. The politics, eh, I don't know about that. And one thing I've learned, there's a complete difference between the two, between governance and politics. Governance as to what we have today, and even what we have had in the past. If you look at what happened with our city when we first came in two years ago, our general fund balance was on a little bit of a downward spiral. A little less than $8 million was in that general fund. Today you have over 11. We cut back some expenses. We did not issue any debt, zero debt during this, uh, during this term. We addressed some issues with OMU today, this past two years, not only with their power, but with their water, one of the most precious resources we can have, that we did that. We advocated for that commission to be able to move our city forward is what we have to do. So the bottom line, looking forward, this is not a social event. We don't do this just to simply kiss the babies and do everything else or go to the events and cut ribbons. You do this for the citizens of Owensboro each and every day. That should be in our forefront, that should be in our minds, everything we do in this position. So I ask all the candidates, all the people that are gonna be voting, remember those individuals that will move you forward and have your best interest at heart because that's what you must have, that's what you deserve. Uh, my name is Larry Condor. I humbly ask for your vote on November 6th. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Pam Smith-Wright. Judge, thank you and the mayor's office for uh, having this forum tonight. I'd like to say that on November the 6th, I'm number nine and that's fine on the ballot. And I'd like to ask for your support and more importantly, your vote. Uh, I've been a city commissioner. This is my fourth term. I'm vying for my fifth term. And I think along with newness, you need someone who's been here, someone who has some history. And I am a person that is true to my word. If I say I'm gonna do something, you can count on it that I'm gonna do it. And you have to have someone that's gonna have some backbone when they're standing up here and they are trying to make decisions that's gonna move this community forward. We have sat here in this community long enough with no jobs, no, uh, nothing that will make people want to come and live here. My children moved away from this community because they felt that there was nothing here for them. I want my grandchildren here. I want my children here. And we have started something in this community that maybe one day they will come back because they're talking about it. When they bring my grandchildren home, they love that park down there. But don't believe the hype. We've done more than downtown. We have created uh, the West End in Mechanicsville where I grew up. We've revitalized that. We've done our storm wa uh, water uh, drainage and we've Germantown. There are so many other things that we've done since I've been a commissioner other than downtown. So. On November the 6th, I would appreciate your vote, 
and like I said, I'm number nine, and number nine is fine. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Jay Velotta. Thank you, Judge. Um, been a lot of talk tonight about a lot of things. By the way, thank you for moderating this. Thank you, Mayor, staff, everybody, for being a part of this. Um, everybody talks about wanting to be better than what we are. I hear a lot about the Owens world's got things going on, and some of them aren't so great, you know, but I'm pretty proud of my city. Um, we've worked really hard to make this city what it is. And I've said this before in public. Um, everybody says, well, why don't you do it this way because Louisville does it this way? Or why don't you do it this way because E-Town has this and we could have that? Um, we're Owensboro. Why don't we try to be Owensboro? And the way we be Owensboro is by making sure that we have the proper people in place. We've got a great field of candidates. It's good to see this many people out here that are at least interested in the position. I don't know what all these politicians you guys are talking about. I'm not a politician, okay? Uh, but um, it's, um, it's one of those things that you have to look back over a period and say, okay, there's been decisions made by past commissions that, uh, that some people don't agree with, but they did their job, just like this commission has done its job to do the best it can with what it's had to work with and making sure that this community continues to move forward progressively. We have to continue to focus on things that are important to this community, like infrastructure. I ran on this the last time. Infrastructure is a big deal. Progressive infrastructure is being able to do public-private partnerships to be able to make this community become more effective in the utilization of its dollars and its, its resources. We've had to do a lot of things that were ne not necessarily our favorite things to do, and that's raise costs on things that were providing separation of stormwater sewer, as Ms. Pam Smithwright mentioned, and of course the OMU uh, water situation, along with some increase in some interest in, in some rates. So uh, we have to have to realize to keep this community moving forward, it is at a cost. We got to make sure we protect that cost and continue to be progressive in moving this community in the right direction. I'm number 10 on the ballot. It doesn't matter which part you come out of the gate as long as you're there at the end of the race. So thank you. I'd appreciate your vote on November 6th. Thank you, Jay. Megan Hagan. Hey, guys. So I just want to say my name is Megan Hagan. I have worked in politics for 18 years. I don't know if you remember me, Judge, but I actually worked as an intern. Uh, my name was May Knight back in the day uh, on one of your campaigns. Um, thank you, tonight, by the way. I, um, I'm not here to work for the government. I'm here to work for the citizens. I'm here to be the voice and the advocate for the citizens that don't have a voice necessarily all the time. Uh, the future's here. Future of politics is here, and I've seen a slate of candidates tonight that I am really excited, and they're sitting all together, and that's my generation. Um, <clears throat> I would like to say that if elected I would like to give OMU, um, I'd, I'd like to put a stop to the closed door meetings. I'd like to, you know, possibly bridge, power the bridge on solar energy. There's, Owensboro has so much potential, and we are a wonderful city. Our citizens are the best part. But there are so many things that we can do. We could be the Silicon Valley of the Midwest. There's so much potential here. And I have the vision for Owensboro, and I hope that that's got through the last uh, nine months since I, I came into this race. I just want to say that thank you to everybody, and um, yes, I uh, vote for me, Megan Hagan, number 11. Thank you, Megan. Andy Gamblin. Uh, I want to thank you, Judge, for uh, hosting, uh, for doing this, and I want to thank City Hall and the Mayor. Um, my name is Andy Gamblin. I'm running for City Commission because I'm concerned about our city. I want to be a voice for the people. I want to be a watchman. Um, we are in we are in debt, and we need to be getting out of debt. Uh, we need to make some tough choices uh, how to get out of debt. We need to look at ways where we can cut taxes. We need to look at ways where we can bring in high-paying jobs to bring our people back. Owensboro is a great place, but right now we are in debt and we've got to get out of that debt. And we should have been, we need to be a stronger voice to OMU. They should have never done away with coal. You know, our president now, whether some people out here like likes them or don't like them, he has taken some of the regulation off coal and trying to bring coal back. Coal is good for us. Coal helps our economy around our tri-state. 
when, when we benefit, then it even helps. It spreads all over to uh, even to McLean County. Um, and you know, we all in this tri-state need to be working together. Um, you know, we could, we should have been working with Henderson to help get a spur. Cause I <laughs> talked to Keith Todd about it, and he said, "Why didn't y'all go with the Alderman?" So remember, I'm number 12 on the ballot. I won't be a watchman. So vote for me, Andy Gamblin, and God bless you. Thank you, Andy. Uh, those of you in the audience, you've heard and seen and listened to these uh, candidates. They've been put on the spot. I would uh, ask that you give them a round of applause for the job that they've done. I, I also want to recognize the fact that, that uh, the county judge executive and the commissioner from the east and the commissioner from the west were here throughout the entire evening. Uh, Fis Davis County Fiscal Court, and I of course was a member of Fiscal Court, is vitally interested in the governance of the city of Owensboro. What you do has a direct impact on not only the, the citizens inside the city, but also those in the surrounding area and those outside. So, uh, uh, Commissioner uh, and Commissioner, Judge, thank you very much for being here this evening. That concludes the, uh, the candidate forum. I have listened to all of you, and uh, I hope that I'm somewhat like similar to the citizens of Owensboro. It would be difficult for me to pick the top four candidates. There are, you are very well spoken, and you have thought about the issues and present yourself extremely well. Finding that four is a challenge. So I think the, uh, the future of the city of Owensboro indeed looks bright. So uh, thank you for your interest. Thank you for being here tonight. And uh, thank you all for showing up. And I want to thank the mayor. You all have a good evening. Thank you.